published, 656 EDT, the 20th of April 2018, updated, 1434 EDT, the 20th of April 2018 This is the horrifying moment a thug doused a model and her cousin in acid through their open car window on her 21st birthday in a random attack his victims said today drove them both to the brink of suicide. John Tomlin, 25, was jailed for 16 years this afternoon after he inflicted horrific injuries on Resham Khan and her cousin Jamil Mata, 37, as they waited in their car at a traffic light in Beckton, East London. The footage seen for the first time today shows Tomlin chasing them down the street and throwing acid on them before calming walking off the road and away along a footpath. Police said the random attack was not racially motivated but happened after unstable Tomlin, who has been sectioned several times, started a row with Mr. Mutar on the pavement. After throwing acid on them his victims sprang out of the car and jumped around as if they were on fire as their clothes were melting off of them witnesses said. They were scarred for life with Miss Khan, who dreamt of being a model, put in an induced coma because her injuries were so terrible and she said today, this was the day when my face was taken away from me apostrophe. Mr. Mata, who was driving the car, has terrible scars to the right side of his head as well as losing his hearing in one ear and said the pain still feels like somebody is ironing me 24-7. He told the court today he was close to jumping in front of a train at Manchester Piccadilly station and said, I wanted to die and couldn't go on anymore. John Tomlin, 25, can be seen here chasing his victims down the street and chucking acid on them through their open window model Resham Khan, left afterwards, right today, was so badly injured she had to be put in a coma after being attacked in a car at a traffic light in Beckton, East London Ms. Resham? pictured today, said after the 16-year sentence that she would not resort to calling her attacker names and said she wanted to get on with her life as, if it never happened John Tomlin, 25, inflicted horrific injuries and refused to give a motive he has also been tortured emotionally because he chose to throw water on his cousin instead of himself but this selfless act made her injuries worse, the court heard. Speaking outside court. Mr. Maktar branded Tomlin an animal and a coward and said he deserves the death penalty apostrophe. The sentence isn't long enough. My life has finished, I'm in continuous pain, I can't sleep and I can't eat, he added. He said he was angered to see Tomlin in the dock and added, it's the first time I've seen him worried, he was like a child, a baby, like a little girl, he deserves that. Dot when asked about the rising number of acid attacks, he said. Something needs to be done about this, I don't feel this was a strong enough sentence. This will carry on now. He should have been given life, he should have done the whole of his life in prison. If this was in America, he could have been given the death penalty. That's what he deserves. When asked if she had a message to anyone throwing acid, Ms. Khan replied, Just don't be a bell. She added, It was tough reading my witness statement, but it made me smile because it reminded me how upset I was before and how far I'd come. I've started my class and my business now and I want to push on and live my life as if it had never happened. I also want to apologize to the man who tried to help at the time when there was chaos going on, who I got acid on. If he sees this, I'm sorry. She added, the judge was amazing. Cutthroat perfect, and I want to thank the police and hospital staff. I also want to thank all the messages of positivity I've received. Miss Khan, who dreamt of being a model, put in an induced coma because her injuries were so terrible and she said today, this was the day when my face was taken away from me. Her cousin Mr. Mata, who remains heavily scarred, arrived at Snaresbrook Crown Court to face his attacker and called him an animal who deserves the death penalty they have said since that they have both considered suicide and are unable to look in the mirror. ASIS attacks in Britain reached 800 a year in the UK in 2017, up from around 200 in 2014. The spike has led to a change in the law meaning they can lead to a life sentence. Arthur Collins, the ex-boyfriend of reality TV star Fern McCann, pictured together, was jailed for 20 years after carrying out a brutal acid attack in a packed nightclub. 
the 25-year-old hurled the corrosive substance over a crowd on the dance floor at Mangaliate in what Judge Noel Lucas said was a despicable act apostrophe. 16 people suffered chemical burn injuries and three people were temporarily blinded, one of whom still suffers from blurred vision in one eye, of which 14 were the subject of charges. Last month a 17-year-old boy was jailed for ten and a half years for carrying out a spate of despicable acid attacks against moped riders. Derek John, Wright, from Croydon, South London, targeted six riders in a bid to steal their vehicles in the north and east of the capital in less than 90 minutes on July 13 last year. John, who appeared at Wood Green Crown Court via video link, carried out grave crimes. According to Judge Noel Lucas QC the teenager sprayed his victims in the face with a noxious liquid, leaving one man with a 30% loss of sight in one eye. The thug who Katie Piper scarred for life could be freed soon after serving just eight years of his sentence. Stefan Sylvester, 27, Wright, was jailed indefinitely in 2009 for throwing acid in Katie's face on the orders of her obsessed ex-boyfriend but he may be about to win parole. Details of their injuries were given during the sentencing of John Tomlin, 25, at Snaresbrook Crown Court on Friday. The cousins had had no previous dealings with their attacker and judge. Sheila Canavan previously described the assault as somewhat random. Jailing Tomlin for 16 years, Judge Canavan said, There was no reason for you to be there. It was her 21st birthday and it was supposed to be a day of celebration. She had her whole life in front of her. No sentence I impose can give back what you took from them. Those injuries are truly horrific. They will have to live with the effects for the rest of their lives. Mr. Matar tried to drive away, but that did not stop you. It is becoming all too common that members of the public are having to squirt water on victims of an acid attack. It's as if this is a fashionable assault being carried out. The injuries are dreadful and life changing. Both victims read statements to the court and were supported by their families. Ms. Khan broke down in tears as she described the devastating impact the attack has had on her life. She will carry lifelong scars to her face, particularly her eyes, and has suffered from severe depression and anxiety as a result of the attack. She said she was extremely happy, confident and my self-esteem was high but has since tried to take her own life a number of times. I had so many plans for the future including to start a business and interviews for jobs. She added. It is upsetting to see my cousin affected by this. He threw water on me rather than himself, which made his injuries worse. She continued, My 21st birthday turned into a day where my face was taken away from me. I have been looking at myself in the mirror, it upsets me. It brings back the incident on the day, it doesn't look like me. No matter what his sentence may be, these injuries will affect me for the rest of my life. Resham Khan said the day of the attack was the day she lost her face witnesses said the victims ran from their car like they were on fire and their clothes melted leaving them terribly scarred, pictured is Miss Khan's back, Mr. Mata has terrible scars to the right side of his head as well as losing his hearing in one ear and said the pain still feels like somebody is ironing me 24-7 Mr. Mata has permanent scarring to his head, neck and body and lost hearing in one of his ears. He also suffers from depression and said he has tried to take his own life. The court heard since the attack both have suffered psychological trauma and considered suicide. Addressing the court Resham Khan said through tears, Before the attack I felt a lot better, happier and confident and my self-esteem was high. I had plans to start my own business and had a number of job opportunities with international travel which had to be put on hold as was my degree. This happened on my 21st birthday, which will stay with me the rest of my life as the day my face was taken away. I was a young woman with the whole of my life ahead of me. I tried to take eight overdoses because d what happened. Looking in the mirror, I don't recognize the person I see. I struggle to have relationships because of the way I now look. I'm still in great pain. Seeing my cousin so distressed is upsetting, hearing him crying. He threw water over me instead of himself, making his injuries much worse. Jamil Matar told the court he considered jumping in front of a train at Manchester Piccadilly Station, but had to stop reading his statement as he became emotional. He said, 
since the attack I cannot face going outside. I don't feel like the same person. These scars will last forever. I cannot have a job. I struggle moving and lifting my arm. I have suffered from mental health problems, lack of sleep and flashbacks. I tried to take my own life at Manchester Station and thought about jumping in front of a train. I wanted to die and couldn't go on anymore. My self-esteem is at zero. I just want to hide. I'm scared of noises and unable to look behind me for fear of another attack. He became so emotional while reading his statement that the prosecutor had to finish for him. Since the attack I have been hurting in many different ways. I don't feel like I'm the same person, he said. Everywhere I go I get stared at. This upsets me. I get flashbacks and I'm really worried to leave my house, constantly looking over my right shoulder fearing attacks. He said that as well as his physical injuries he also suffers from severe depression and tried to take his own life. I am still in so much pain, I'm still burning and struggle to sleep at night, he added. My self-esteem is zero, my future is finished, I have nothing to look forward to. I am mentally and physically scarred for life. I can't even have a relationship. It's enough dealing with myself. He had previously admitted two counts of inflicting grievous bodily harm, but denied two counts of the more serious charge of inflicting grievous bodily harm with intent. In November he changed that plea to guilty. It means he could face a life term when he is sentenced in January. Judge Sheila Canavan said the attack appeared to be random because the victims had no previous dealings with Tomlin before the incident just after 9am on June 21 this year in Beckton, East London. She told Snaresbrook Crown Court that Tomlin, who has teardrops tattooed on his face, would undergo a psychiatric assessment before he is sentenced today. A motive for the attack is yet to be given in court, but Tomlin, of Canning Town, East London, has previously been sectioned under the Mental Health Act and has been prescribed antipsychotic medication. Police have said the attack was not racially motivated but happened after an argument between Mr. Mattar and Tomlin on the pavement. After Mr. Mattar returned to his car Tomlin hurled acid through the passenger window where Miss Khan was sitting. He then moved round to the driver's side where he threw acid at her cousin. Both victims suffered horrific burns to their face and body. Miss Khan, a business management student at Manchester Metropolitan University, has posted pictures online showing her face continuing to heal after several skin grafts. She has also posted pictures of herself out with friends, declaring last month, it's time to stop hiding. She has written emotional posts throughout her journey, once telling how her dreams of becoming a model had been destroyed. Tomlin was on the run after the attack and police issued this CCTV before his eventual arrest describing the attack, she wrote on Twitter, I saw my clothes burn away in front of me. We stripped off in the middle of the road, running around screaming and begging for water. She went on, my plans are in pieces, my pain is unbearable, and I write this in hospital whilst I patiently wait for the return of my face. Currently, I have two main priorities, to make a full recovery and to make sure no one ever goes through the living nightmare I have endured. She has been described as a true inspiration on Twitter where she has 20,000 followers. Mr. Mata suffered severe burns to his right eye, arms, back, legs and neck and was left deaf in one ear. He said after the attack that his injuries felt like somebody is ironing me 24-7 adding, I'm in continuous pain, I don't go outside and I can't even look at myself in the mirror, 